and get started. Um, if you're not familiar, my name's Emily Hardin. I'm the Executive Director of Techlahoma Foundation. Um, that's why you're here today, is to hear about Techlahoma and what's going on there. Um, to start us off is going to be Daniel. Um, so I will let him talk about it. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. I'm super excited to, to do a town hall. Um, for those that don't know, I am this year's Techlahoma president. Um, so I'm going to go over the agenda real quick for what we're going to be doing and, and how we're going to run this. So it's pretty clear. It should be mostly open. Um, I don't have my video on. Let's see if I can turn it on. Um, I can't turn on my video. Let's see. That's okay. I'm not that pretty anyways. Um, so I'm going to go over the agenda real quick just to keep everybody on the same page. Most of this conversation is going to be open forum to let you ask more questions um, with the goal being, oh, there we go. Now I have camera. Uh, with the goal being to kind of have a question and response style forum um, after we do the initial intros and, and go over some of the, the stuff we want to get out. And then during wrap up, we're going to go over kind of some finishing uh, thoughts and, and conclusions as well. Uh, so I want to start by reminding everybody what Techlahoma's kind of mission statement is, and that is to enrich Oklahoma's technologists of all backgrounds through education, connection, and opportunity. Um, this is what drives us and motivates us for every decision. So when we're deciding yes or no on any particular proposition or any item, this is the the, the core ethos we're trying to like circle back towards. Um, let me go and pull up my notes that I took down. There we go. Yes. So uh, we are going to do welcome introductions. We're going to go over key updates and initiatives on Techlahoma, such as uh, workshops, such as user groups, such as um, the Techno Gala and other events that we have coming up. Then we'll do an open forum. That'll be roughly 50 minutes or so. Uh, and then at the very end, we're going to discuss upcoming events, volunteering opportunities, how to become a board member, uh, how to participate in community programs, and, and stuff like that. And just as a general reminder that, you know, in the text here, as well as the tech in, uh, text in the Slack or in the questions, we are adhering to the Techlahoma Code of Conduct at all times. Um, so it is imperative for you to be respectful and nice. We want to have good back and forth and good conversation. Uh, you do not have to agree with everybody and you do not have to have and share the same opinions, but you are expected to be respectful of everybody's opinions uh, and, and conversations. And the purpose of this town hall, so I had originally come up with a this has been done in the past. We, you know, there's been many iterations of this kind of general communication from, you know, board and, and presidents and executives down for a while. Um, there were times where we did board minutes and board meetings in public. There were times when we didn't. Um, for me, I was getting a lot of questions that seemed to be answered a lot in Slack, but would get buried. And this is a good opportunity for us to have uh, a lot of trans a lot more transparency and a lot more open communication around all the all the things. Um, so the purpose of this tech, uh, this town hall in particular is about transparency, transparency into our initiatives, into the progress we've made, and into the process we go about making those decisions, whatever they might be. Um, the format, I've already said this uh, a couple times, but in general, the first section is going to be myself and Emily kind of trading off. We're just going to go over the general topics. Um, we're going to provide updates, and then we're going to have this huge open forum. Um, that will be unlocked. Um, we will not be turning on audio and voice because when you turn on, a, you know, 10, 15 people talking all at the same time, it gets a little hard to answer. We want to make sure that we can we can track the Q and A and keep it real nice and concise. We don't have people talking over each other. Um, so if there is a board member or something like that, uh, we might turn one on at a time. Um, but we're going to try to keep most of this done through chat or through the Q and A so that it's all available and it's also a little bit easier to record and some people are shy about being on camera and having their voices recorded as well. Yeah. 
Yeah, so exactly what Daniel said. We already had a great idea, thanks James, um, for having some sort of regular interactive Zoom event. Um, I think that's a great idea. We should definitely do that. Um, so appreciate that input. Um, I wanted to kind of go over a few things that have happened recently in Tecklahoma. If you haven't been following every single newsletter, reading every single tiny little detail. Um, in 2023, OK Coders became a part of Tecklahoma. So OK Coders was founded by OUICCEW, and basically it is a six-month full-stack boot camp. It is now run as part of Tecklahoma, which means I run the program. Um, but then we have Zach Mays, who is actually our head instructor. We have additional instructors. We have anywhere from 15 to 30 students at any given time that are being able to learn full stack web development, which ties into our mission to educate future Techlahomans. So we're really excited about that. Um, I know there was a question about the internship information. So at the end of the six month boot camp, we did get funding for a scholarship for a four month internship for uh, a select number of students. And I am working with them personally and with companies in an effort to try and connect them to um, great opportunities. If you yourself run a company or have hiring decisions and you're interested in talking to me more about this, feel free to reach out. Um, if you go on Slack, you can go to at Emily H um, and you can schedule a meeting with me. You can submit ideas. There's all sorts of links in my profile. Um, Volunteering as an OK Coders instructor. So right now it's purely in Oklahoma City. Um, we are trying to move it to Tulsa as well. The mentors are volunteers. The teachers are paid um, because it is a twice a week commitment for three hours total plus some additional work outside of it, making sure that you're um, getting everything um, covered and making sure that we're getting our students the best information they can have. So um, Ryan, if you're interested in that, definitely reach out to me and I will talk to you about that uh, separately because there's a process and um, how that goes. Um, we have to have all sorts of different things because we'd be paying you as an independent contractor. So great question though. Um, Funding wise, we have gotten some more additional funding, which has been fantastic. So as I was speaking earlier about the scholarship, we have funding from, excuse me, the Oklahoma City Alliance, um, which is what's helping us fund OK Coders and that scholarship program that's running for this year and next year. Um, after that's completed, we're hoping that we can continue getting funding and other sources, but we only have funding secured for the next two years for that. We also have in as much foundation donated uh, again gave us money through a grant and all of that led to the culmination of me actually being an employee now as opposed to an independent contractor. So we're pretty excited about that. Techlahoma's first employee, so I'm pretty happy. Um, workshops. We have had so many different variations of workshops throughout uh, Techlahoma's history. And I think this year has kind of marked a shift. Uh, we've had a few user groups express interest in running workshops themselves, and that has been amazing. And so we've kind of let that happen, and you tried to provide Techlahoma funds for that as much as we can. Um, I know Daniel is brainstorming another workshop coming up. She Codes OKC is hosting a speaking workshop. Um, we had one what was it, a month or two ago that was agile. There's all sorts of awesome workshops happening and we really appreciate the community taking the lead on that. Upcoming events. We have so many upcoming things. So first is UXOK um, is August 11th. It's going to be amazing. It's at Skyline Event Center. If you go to uxok.org, you can see all the speakers that we have lined up. It's going to be great. Uh, tickets are on sale now. We're also still seeking sponsors. So if you or your company are interested in sponsoring, definitely let me know. Techno Gala, exact same thing. We are still seeking sponsors and you can buy your tickets. 
But if you haven't heard about it and don't know anything about it, the Techno Gala is a exciting thing coming up. Um, we had talked about having a gala for a while, but I don't know about you, but not everybody wanted to dress up. And so the exciting thing about this gala is it's going to be at the Oklahoma City Science Museum. You're going to be able to go to all of the exhibits and have a drink and eat some food and have a great time all while supporting Techlahoma. We would love to see you there. You can also register online for that as well. Thunder Plains. If you've heard anything about Oklahoma, you've heard the name Thunder Plains. Uh, Thunder Plains is November 10th. We are very excited about that. There's also an option for um, people are still submitting talks. So if you're interested in submitting a talk for Thunder Plains, those are still available. A couple of bigger events to highlight. Next week, there is a mixer in Tulsa where multiple user groups are getting together and they're going to talk about what it's like to run a user group and all sorts of awesome stuff. It's gonna be a great time. And I really think, um, did, I, did I drop now? Did I just drop for a second? <laughs> I just, okay, I'm back. Um, hopefully you didn't miss much. Um, multiple user groups getting together. Pi Pros is also going to be there, um, Pi Pros Tech Crew. It's gonna be a great event. It's at Holbert in Tulsa. Another thing that's coming up, and thank you, Kimberly, for adding it in the chat, is the She Codes OKC workshop. Um, definitely sign up for that. There's a few spots left, and they're going to help you kind of nail down how to give a talk and how to submit a talk to Thunder Plains, and maybe you'll get selected. I do want to say that our selection process for Thunder Plains is a blind process, and so we do look at talk titles and talk abstracts alone um, for the first round of review for our options. So it's definitely something that you should look into. We would love to have you submit. There's no harm in submitting a talk. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Man, I put all my slides right next to each other. Um, all right, so things uh, that I wanna let everyone know. If you run a user group, let me know what you need. I can't read your mind. I would love to, no, maybe I wouldn't. Um, but I really want to know how I can better help you, how I can better serve you. Um, recently, Kimberly came up with an idea of having a business card with the Slack link on it. Those are in the mail right now. Super excited about that. Um, you know, uh, this user group mixer that's happening in Tulsa, um, they were questioning about um, how they could handle food and things. And we're happy to help. I am here to help. Let me know how I can help you because I want, that's my job. My job is to help the community members of Techlahoma succeed. So I really want to do that for you. Um, if you know something that you think we should know, let me know. For instance, um, there's a, I'm making something up right now. There's a user group about dogs and how dogs are involved in tech, okay? Obviously that's not a real user group, but if there was and they wanted to connect to Techlahoma, I would love to connect with them. If they don't want to connect to Techlahoma, but they still want to like hear what we do and we can help them in any way, awesome. I want to talk to them. A coding school, um, a new person in the tech atmosphere, a person who's been in tech for years and they've never heard of us. I would love to talk to them. I am happy. Obviously, I'm talking a bunch right now. I love talking. So uh, talk to me and I want to talk to them. Um, last thing is idea time. This is actually how Kimberly sent that Slack business card idea is she submitted the idea on my profile. So if you go to my profile on Slack and you click, I have an idea, that lets me know that you have something that you want me to look into and work on. Would love to have you use that link. It helps me stay organized and know what all projects I need to work on. If it doesn't feel quite like that should be it, feel free to message me. I also have a link where you can schedule a meeting with me, 30 minutes where I can just talk to you and we can figure out what it is that you're actually needing or what you're wanting and 
we can run things through with you. I'm happy to do that anytime. And I just want you all to know that's what my job is. That's what our board members' jobs is, jobs are. Um, and we want to be there for you all. All right, with that, we're at open forum. I don't see any open questions, so feel free to start putting questions or I'm going to start rambling. I'm not going to ramble, but. Actually, I can uh, just real quick talk about the uh, ally bot. Um, so we're, we're missing a slide here. Uh, I wanted to address before we got too far uh, talking about the ally bot. We had some. We had a had some incidents uh, a little bit over a month ago. It took a lot of time for us to respond and and to manage and respond to. I guess is the easiest way to put it. Um, for those that don't know, we use a automated chat bot that sends a private message whenever you use a word that has more inclusive alternatives, um, and it will just prompt you to potentially look at changing some of those. Uh, problematic words to be more inclusive. Um, it has been extremely helpful for us in this community, especially over the past roughly two years. Um, but it is also apparently controversial to some. This is the least extreme option we have available to us to help try to improve some of the verbiage we use in this community. Um, the other options is we could be like Twitter and just immediately ban people that use words that we don't find inclusive. We could be like Facebook and we could ban you or shadow ban you um, or like any other major community where they just immediately shut you down wholesale. We chose to use the lightest, most least um, aggressive form of kind of community moderation we could because we honestly trust our members mostly to please themselves. Um, so the ally bot is not going away. We are going to do our best to make all the options available to it more public and more open. Um, but I'm going to reiterate, it's private. Um, it is a very low level thesaurus that attempts to, and with no context, provide alternatives to specific problematic words. Um, you can mute these yourself. Uh, a lot of this is things that you can self-manage. The only thing you can't do is turn it off. Um, so that, that is what it is. So I wanted to uh, bring it out there. We had, uh, you know, some incidents a little bit over a month ago or so, and I wanted to make it a point of this particular conversation, make sure I address that. Yeah. Thank you, Daniel. Um, I don't know where that ended up in the slides, so I appreciate you, uh, calling that out. Um, we haven't had any open questions yet. Um, I'll leave it open for another couple of minutes. Maybe people are typing super long questions. Um, while I'm doing that, definitely check out all of our events on Meetup. I saw someone wasn't yet in our Slack community. Um, if you have any questions or concerns with that, um, feel free to email me and I would love to contact you and talk to you all about that. Um, there's also, I can pull up this. I won't. Okay. I'm going to switch my share screen for a second. So we have quite a few um, user group meetings coming up. So anytime we write me, there's coffee and chill, user group mixer, um, in-person game dev meetup, uh, monthly open source with lug nuts, um, another hack night. We've got a day in the life of a marketing tech professional, which Hartwig staffing hosts for us, which is amazing and then scaling design systems with OKC Design and Tech. So a lot of great events to check. Yes, perfect. We've got questions coming in. Okay, so I'm going to answer this one first. So um, can you share more about the focus of events for people very new? Perfect question, wonderful question. 
Um, if you go to teclahoma.org, I will pull this up for you. Um, you can look at literally every single thing we do. Um, if you click how to be a member, it explains what Slack is. It talks about how we have a free level. The biggest thing is that if you attend an event, you're a member. We are happy you're here. We want to learn more. Some of the events that are easier to join in Tulsa it would be a hack night. Um, in Oklahoma City would be maybe a web devs event or something hosted um, by Hartwick Snapping like the marketing or an IT professional. Um, some of those are really good events. Anything else you want to add, Daniel, about that? No, that, I think that was pretty good. Uh, you know, the the focus of events are, are really around improving the, the lives and livelihoods of, of technologists. So um, there are a plethora of different events. Um, we're trying to do better specifically about the middle ground. So, um, you know, over the next couple of months, you're going to notice they're going to be slightly fewer entry level uh, events that we're pushing as hard and more mid ground events because we have so many user groups and so many uh, discussions that they're available around to help uh, people that are newer to technology in particular, but we were having a hard time with this, you know, going from junior to mid or from mid to senior or whatever it might be in your, in your career field. So we're really trying to double down on that particular gap we had. Um, and I think we, we've done a pretty good job. We've, we've done okay and we can always do better. Um, but that's like a particular, you know, specific focus for some of the events we have coming up. Perfect. Um, another question was raised about our finances. Um, we discussed talking about our finances on this call, and then we said, well, it's not end of year, so we wouldn't be able to give you end of year reporting information. Um, but what I can do is I can share. Um, we had an annual report that came out in 2022. Um, so what you can see is we've had a significant increase in income. Um, we are a little bit above now where we were prior to COVID. Um, COVID really took a hit on everything. Um, without conferences that are in person, we're not gonna make any money. Um, our conferences have helped us get a little more stable. Um, you can see here, our main sources of revenue are conferences, individual nations, and grants. Um, you can see that all of two of the three went up in uh, 2022 from 2021. Um, you can also see our expenses went up in two of the three. So part of that was hiring me. Um, unfortunately, volunteers have full-time jobs too. <laughs> it's helpful to have um, someone else who's not uh, working on their other job. This is my primary responsibility is to take care of this. Um, these were our original projections for 2023. And um, I will say with our grant, the one that we received for OK Coders has kind of shifted quite a bit of things. Um, it is not <laughs> it is a grant that we are using through um, like five levels up and like filters all the way down to us. It's very complicated. Um, but basically all of that money for OK Coders has to stay in the OK Coders side of things. Um, that was the way it was funded. So we're still working on trying to get additional funding that helps Techlahoma in general, um, not just OK Coders. Um, we are talking about expanding the program in full set. Cool, and if we get the funding that allows for that. Um, we also want to work with um, making our conferences a little bit larger um, and more awesome. I recently went to KCDC in order to kind of shadow them and determine how they're doing that. Um, so that was pretty neat. And we're hoping eventually it's not just me running this uh, ship, but we have some additional hands helping with that. So that's some information about our projections that is a little outdated. Um, I don't have a 
I don't have a visual that makes a lot of sense um, in terms of our current budget. Um, but I can say this is kind of pretty accurate to where we were, except for yeah, the AK coders portion of things. So thank you for that question. Yeah, I'll just add on too. Um, I think one of our primary focuses this year, especially around not just user groups, but around events as well, is making sure we're being um, cause our goal as a nonprofit is not to earn profit, right? It's not to just have money hanging around in bank accounts for long periods of time. It's to continually reinvest. Um, but we can also be efficient, effective. And I would just like to remind everybody that, you know, you vote with your attention, you vote with your att attendance on the things that we continue to provide resources for, um, for user groups. This is, uh, every now and then prompting for things like attendance. Um, these are, this is how we can more adequately provide better resources in the past. We've had issues. And whenever I was looking at the budget from like 2022 and 2021, um, the primary issues where we would have money that was allocated for spending that just never got spent and it would just sit in accounts or sit in budget line items. Um, so, you know, whenever I came in this year, one of my focuses was on efficiency and effectiveness and making sure that things like events are at least breaking even. That's the, always the goal at, for throwing events is we never wanna have an event, you know, that costs 20,000 that just takes away from all of our user groups. We would rather try to invest more in user groups. So you vote with your tenants, you vote with your tickets. Uh, and also this is another reason why we're investing a lot in kind of the middle ground uh, because there's like a seed harvest, you know, um, replenished style of community we have here where we seed the ground, so to speak, with junior engineers or junior technologists. We should be growing them into seniors that have higher incomes that can provide more individual donations as well as potential employment donations. And then we reap those rewards in the forms of donations. And then we continue reinvesting back into the bottom and the middle. Um, so naturally this year, the biggest area that I wanted to try to attempt to address or do our, our, the best job of was this kind of middle ground. So that's where that comes into play uh, with finances as well. I think that about covers finance um, questions. Um, Lisa, as of now, feel free to ask more. Um, we had a question and I'm typing the answer just so it gets sent to everyone. Um, about how we can help a former full stack developer trying to re-enter the workforce after a long career break. That's exactly our goal. That's like one of the most wonderful things that we want to do. Um, my first initial suggestion would be to go to the jobs talk channel in Slack. Um, that is where everyone has all sorts of chat about how to find a job, how to build your resume, what should I include, what should I not include, how should I answer this question in an interview, how should I not. Um, we also have a ton of video content of that as well in our YouTube, if you want to look at that. Um, there's often um, calls that we have, calls is not the right word, meetings, uh, user group meetups and things like that, that we have that also address some of that. Um, because well, I would love to help you personally, the best people are people that have been in your shoes and know exactly what you're doing. Great place to be. Anything else to add to that, Daniel? Um, I think, you know, if you've taken a long time off of your, now we're going to get in the weeds on this a little bit. Um, if you've taken a long time off, um, you know, from tech in a career, you know, the biggest thing you need to do is get back into networking because you're kind of like you already have the skills and you've you've already done the hard part of learning and now your your ability to learn will be much quicker than if you started from scratch but the networking part is probably what you're going to miss the most of um, depending on how long the break was so attending these user group meetings not necessarily maybe for the content maybe it's something that you're just going to get a quick refresher for but to shake hands and to get to know the people that could eventually be your peers or potential employers is going to be paramount, you know, to helping you get back into the industry. I totally agree with the networking. Um, it looks like it was a 14 year break. So yeah, uh, you definitely need to um, 
much as I hate saying it, but networking is the key. Everyone's like, oh, I have to network. I have to talk to people. But that really, truly is um, the effect. Um, you meet someone who knows someone who knows someone. And then eventually it's a great way for you to gain your um, knowledge and your network in order to find that new job and find the best place for that. Um, Daniel, I would love for you to cover about how tech, what the word tech means for Techlahoma um, in terms of biotech, engineering, things that aren't quite developer. Um, I'd love to hear that information. Yeah, this is something we're, we're trying to be better at because there are a lot of tech adjacent jobs and a lot of jobs that involve um, programming or things like that, that we don't always do a fantastic job of supporting. So for instance, QA, um, even things like project management, uh, even user interface, user experience and research and design. Um, it's, it's something that we are trying to do better at. Um, there is a very, very strong biotech component of our developer community in general. Um, a lot of the people that are seniors in, in the Slack channels you message are going to be somewhere in health tech or oil and gas. So biotech and engineering, although we don't have a lot of specific user groups geared around those things, they all use, interact, and uh, you know, come into play with development in general. Um, so I would say that it's more of uh, what would be a it's more of a tangential or you know a peripheral experience than a direct one. Um, I will say once again that we have a, a really thriving biotech and healthcare uh, technologist community uh, within the dev community we have here. So Devin Mobley, our former president uh, of Techlahoma, has a, a startup geared around healthcare technology in particular, for instance. Um, a lot of the generator stuff and Cortado Ventures and a lot of the investment firms um, that have dev shops and dev agencies are also uh, in the biotech community heavily because of OU and OU Medical Center uh, complex that we have downtown. Um, so not directly, but uh, it is there. Perfect. Thank you. Um, this is a great question. My brother is a talented and capable artist and he's expressed interest in web and graphic design. So where to point them? I have two suggestions, um, depending on your location. We have Oklahoma City Web Design and Tech. Um, nope, there's no web in there. It's Oklahoma City Design and Tech. Um, user group if he's in Oklahoma City. In Tulsa, there's um, Tulsa UX. Both of those groups have Slack communities. There's also a UX channel um, in our Slack that you're more than welcome to join. There's all sorts of options. Um, chat virtually and kind of learn more, but in person, they do have in-person events all the time. If you're in Tulsa, the UX is gonna be one of the user groups that's part of the mixer next week. So I would definitely suggest uh, checking that out. Oh, it is called design. Thank you, Kimberly, it's not called UX. <laughs> All right, any more questions? I answered a few typed um, user groups. We have a option on our website that you can look and see all of the user groups that are currently there. You can also see the user group handbook, which outlines how to apply for a user group. Um, if you have ideas, if you want to start a user group, we want you to have a group. Um, we'd love to have that. So um, we're happy to help you with that. Looks like there's a Slack, or not a Slack question, but there's a chat question that you get put in Q&A. It says uh, by Shant, um, and if I'm mispronouncing your name, I apologize. But it says, uh, quick question, any events that will include companies looking for developers? Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All, all the above. For one, um, most of the user groups have developers and or hiring managers and or people that are part of companies that are hiring. So getting the network effect through those 
is as good as going to an event directly with employers because oftentimes, for instance, I'm an employer. And when I go to these networking events, it's often not a super great, uh, when I go to specific ones for hiring in particular, uh, it's not always like the best atmosphere for me to get a gauge on a candidate. Um, I really enjoy, I, I try to do a better job of interacting with them on Slack, either personally or having them ask me questions or going to user group meetings because I, I know that they're going to be passionate about specifically what I'm looking for. When you have like a, like a, a job fair, um, it's kind of a, a mix of different technology stacks and stuff like that as an, as an employer in particular, they are valuable. Um, but we do have those as well. Uh, so, um, you know, we have plenty of opportunities uh, where you can meet potential employers. Slack channel, uh, the Slack channel, the jobs channel in particular, is going to be your, your primary use case. Um, so networking and then the jobs channel and Slack. Uh, the only thing we ask for in the jobs channel and Slack is that you have to be based in Oklahoma City. Uh, or, or not Oklahoma City, but in Oklahoma in general. I have got Oklahoma City on my brain. Um, but yes, you have to be based in Oklahoma. So if you're from Oklahoma, but currently living in Colorado, we want to try to keep these jobs local because it's about enriching the lives of Oklahoma technologists. Um, but you can work remotely in Oklahoma for a company outside of Oklahoma. That's perfectly fine. Um, so as long as it's flowing into Oklahoma, we generally don't, don't mind. You can do whatever you want for the most part. Definitely. Um, something that I didn't mention earlier in the event section, but definitely should have, um, there's OKC Tech Plus Plus is coming up July 26. That's a very, very casual event that you will meet literally anyone from a person who heard the word tech once to a CTO of a company. Um, so definitely check that event out. Um, Techlahoma is one of the many, many people involved in planning that. Um, so you might um, look into that as well. I don't see any more questions. Let's see. Um, someone asked if the minutes are available to everyone from our previous board meetings, and they are. Um, if you go to techlahoma.org and you look at the footer, um, you can see our minutes, and I'm trying to update it to where you can see all the previous minutes, but I know you can at least see this year's. Um, do, do, do. If you... Um, are interested in any events, I also messaged this in the chat. Uh, 36 Degrees North has events, Verge OKC has events. If you're not in either of those locations, um, Norman, OU has a bunch of events and other events in Norman. There's um, a couple of people that have brought up ideas of user groups in not Tulsa and not Oklahoma City, and we would love, love, love to see that happen. Um, Tulsa and Oklahoma City are tend to be like the primary locations in Oklahoma, but that's not all of Oklahoma. And our job and our mission is for all of Oklahoma. It is not for the metros. So um, I know I have a meeting next week with someone who wants to start a user group uh, outside of those metros. So we are definitely open to that. Definitely excited about that. Love to talk to you more about that if you have any interest in that. I think we've gone enough time without questions, do we think? All right. Upcoming info. This is just repeating what I already said, except for it doesn't have everything that I asked. So um, UX OK, Techno Gala, Thunder Planes, Tulsa User Group Mixer, She Codes OKC Workshop. And that's literally just some of the things that we're doing. Um, Definitely, definitely, definitely keep an eye on your email inbox on all the exciting things. Um, UXOK is definitely the one to check out soon. Um, August 11th is right around the corner. So definitely sign up for that soon. I've had a lot of questions. Daniel's been getting a lot of questions about how to get involved. Um, you've heard what we're saying today. You're excited. You want to get more involved. Um, I have super recently updated the volunteer page. 
So I will pull that up and share that portion of my screen real quick. So if I hit help and volunteer, and it's loading because my computer is slow, you can see that you can register to volunteer for UX OK, volunteer at the gala, volunteer on a committee. You can volunteer for Thunder Plains. You can put your interest in joining the board in the future. You can apply to be a Slack mod. We are in the need of additional mods. So please, 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 Alec, no, your mic is not on. Um, please, please uh, look into that if that's what something you're interested in. Um, I recently updated all of this, so it should be totally up to date. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, user group applications are probably going to open in about September, right after we finish the Techno Gala, we finished UX OK, um, and we'll be ready to get ramping up for 2024. Um, that'll be amazing. Super excited for that. Um, we did want to clarify for the mods and for the board. Um, everything else has been is fairly like open. Anyone who wants to join can join. Um, the board, there we're in the process of changing our bylaws. So once those bylaws become ratified, then I'll send out an email and everyone will be able to see all of that information. Um, but basically allowing um, boards are board members are nominated by current board members. So if you want to be nominated by someone, we don't know that unless you tell us. Um, so definitely tell us. Um, otherwise, I'm gonna start poking people and saying, hey, I think you might be a good board member. Um, Slack mods, the, there is some stipulations of Slack mods because we want our Slack mods to be super on top of it and responding to any inquiries quickly. Um, we are in need of a few different, uh, a few more mods. I think our number is a little low right now. So we'd love to have it. It's a very low commitment, but when it happens, you just got to act quick and then you're done. Um, it's fairly simple and quick. Um, the other thing I want to mention is if you volunteer for anything, if you spent one day volunteering, helping me at 200 OK, I am totally happy to write up a quick little LinkedIn recommendation for you. If you need a reference and you volunteered for a couple of things, I'm happy to be listed as a reference. Um, I may not be crazy intimidating, but my title sounds cool and people would love to hear. It, it's a good resume booster um, to have a little a fancy person title on your uh, resume. So I'm happy to help with that in any way I can. And I know many of our board members feel the same way. That is the end of my presentation. Um, well, I will, uh, if you don't mind, I'll talk yeah. a little bit more about board members and volunteers in general. Uh, yeah. You know, Techlahoma is a volunteer driven organization. Um, so we don't operate without volunteers. Uh, we don't have the budget to hire all the staff necessary to, you know, staff these events or to organize these user groups or anything like that. So volunteering is paramount. Um, same thing for board members. Um, I get asked often, what was the process of becoming a board member like? I never thought about becoming a board member. They asked me if I was interested. I said, sure. Um, it, it was as easy as just getting nominated and voted in. Um, the, the key here, especially for board members or even presidents, because I'm not always going to be the president, we rotate quite often uh, because we're really just meant to be good stewards of like the Techlahoma brand and the Techlahoma ethos. Uh, you know, this is not my my personal company. It's not my personal investment. This is um, we are just stewarding all the resources to try to better the Techlahoma community in general. So if you feel like that fits your personality or you feel like uh, you would like to take on that responsibility, please, please, please just let us know. Um, because as board members cycle out, we need new ones to replace them. And our, some of our bylaws are pretty strict. You can only be a board member for so long because we don't want you know, we, we don't want to run into issues where the old guard prevent the new guard from getting in and making changes. Um, so with that being said, volunteer as much as you're willing to and as much as you'd like to on things that you're interested in. Um, if you know other people that are interested in volunteering, feel free to tell them the same thing. We're always interested in volunteers. It's how we operate. 
Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's we are we are volunteer run. So please, please, please let us know if that's uh, that's what you would like to help us with. Yes, definitely. Um, that is our primary structure. I am here to enable you all. I am here to give all the volunteers a, an ability to say, Emily, can you do this for us? Because I don't have the time, but this is a good idea and we need to do this. That's my job. So I would love to be able to help you all with that. Um, speaking of, I listed in the chat the link to schedule a meeting with me. My LinkedIn, if you want to connect, my email address, if you have any questions, um, I am happy to just grab coffee. And by coffee, I mean something that has a bunch of stuff in it and it's not coffee anymore. Um, anytime. So feel free to chat, call, email, happy to connect. Um, if there's no more questions, I think we'll probably wrap a little early if that's cool with everyone. So. Um, Last thing, again, techlow.org, check us out. Um, you probably already have if you're here. So I'm um, happy to have you all, and thanks for coming to this year's town hall.